Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Brian Kolb, KC0QLZ. It says, uh, Dave, he has a Yaesu FT991A, which is a very nice radio, and I recently bought a Yaesu M1 reference desktop microphone. I was curious about the mic gain setting on the microphone and the radio. I currently have the desktop mic at full power and the mic gain on the radio set to 30. Is that too high? Don't know if that works. I wear headphones and it sounds okay to me. And also, can I run the processor with these mic gain settings without distortion? I also notice the microphone has its own EQ settings, as does the 991A. Okay, let's talk about some of the things he's talking about. He's talking about a microphone, and there is an amplifier after the microphone called mic gain, and it makes the microphone sound louder or less loud. And the setting on that is completely dependent on the person using the mic. If you tend to speak into your microphone with your outdoor voice, you would have a different setting than you would with your indoor voice. By the way, I do recommend the use of your outdoor voice on a microphone because it's clearer and carries further. Um, and then he talks about EQ settings and the um, speech processor settings. So let's look at what's going on here. He has a radio, and it's FT-991A, um, which is a very nice ASU radio. It's their, it, the, their, their 450 is their real entry-level radio, but the 991A is where they think they'll catch most people coming in. It's a very nice radio. It, in addition to HF, it has 6, uh, 2, and uh, 70 centimeters. 2 meters and 70 centimeters, okay. Now, this mic is an external mic. And it's got a console on it. And it's got uh, mic gain. And it has probably three settings for an EQ. Now, there's one other thing he asked about. And that was about uh, speech compression. Okay, now, these are three different things. Let's talk a little bit about them. First of all, the mic gain. There is an amplifier uh, in, in the bass here. It's not a huge amplifier, sort of like a pre-amplifier. And it puts it into the 991A, which has its own amplifier uh, for the uh, gain. These two obviously operate opposite each other. And one way you can check that is to turn one all the way up and all the way down and then turn the other all the way up and all the way down to make sure that they're independent. And this control isn't just driving this one that's inside the radio, which is possible. But assuming there are two, I would put this mid-range, okay, and then adjust this according to the instruction book. Now, talk into the microphone as you normally would. A lot of people grab the mic and hold it close to their mouth. Other people leave it on the desk. Closer is better uh, to a point. Now that point is you want to have that uh, microphone maybe this far away from your mouth. Uh, otherwise, it catches the plosives, and it sounds definitely overdriven, even if you compensate for it. The reason that you want it closer rather than farther, if you put it two feet away, it will pick up uh, the ticking of the clock. <laughs> it will pick up every little piece of noise on uh, your desk and uh, noise from uh, the fan and the air conditioning and stuff like that. Whereas if you speak closer, that will make your voice the loudest thing around and will tend to make these things fade away. Okay. Now, these are not automatic gain. This is automatic gain control not. Okay. 
When you set a mic gain, that's the mic gain. It does not automatically adjust your voice. So you really do have to set this properly so that you get the proper voice. Your instruction manual will tell you what you should get out. There's some meter readings and stuff that you can look at and make sure that they are proper. Now, EQ, what's EQ? This is equalization. And it refers to uh, low, medium, and high frequencies are usually the three that uh, are available to you. Low is your low speech. M and H are where you have the most uh, speak power punch. And so what you will tend to want to do if you want to work a long distance away, you will cut the low back, keep the mid in the mid and push the high up, okay? That will tend to give your voice more punch. If you're talking just locally and you are going for voice quality, you'll make them about equal, okay? These are designed for uh, men's voices, okay? The uh, female hams among us already have a voice that much of it is out of the range of standard communications bandwidth, but you tend to get the punch through. This is why you find a lot of women in police dispatch centers and so on, because their voices tend to be clear over the radio because they have the higher frequency components. All the low frequency component does for you is affect the bass, the boom in your voice. Okay, that's equalization. Now, the radio has equalization inside it too. Now, uh, double check to make sure that moving these doesn't move these. Uh, if it does move these, you can do them from either way. If you're going to move these here, then go ahead and put this equalization on um, flat. Make it flat. Now, I know on the um, I know on the the FTDX 3000 setting the equalization is a complex procedure, and in fact. There's a special piece of software that comes with it from Yesu that you can use to set the speech equalization. And I spent a lot of time getting that right. And as a result, I was rewarded with lots of contacts. Now, here's something to keep in mind. You're not looking for absolute fidelity in your voice. Because nobody you're talking to out there, unless you're talking to somebody you know personally, nobody out there knows what you really sound like. They just know your radio voice. And so if you tend to emphasize the mids and the highs, especially the highs, and keep those lows down, your voice will have a lot more punch. And somebody will say, well, that's not high fidelity. No, it's not. Who cares? Nobody knows what your real voice sounds like. They only know your radio voice. So you might as well make your radio voice as clear as you can, and the clarity comes in the mid and especially the high frequencies. Now understand that high here does not mean 8 to 10 kilohertz. High here means about 2,500 kilohertz, okay, because your cutoff is not much higher than that, about 3,000 max hertz. Uh, on some radios, about 2,650, okay? And that is the part that will carry the voice. Now, something else to understand, and I'll, I'll show it to you here on the board before we talk about uh, speech compression. And that is that if you take a spectrum and this is low and high, medium in here, and your voice tends to modulate if you keep the low down and the mids in the middle and the highs at the high, okay, your radio will spread the entire 100 watts across the whole thing. If you push the lows through like this, that means that your highs or whatever have got to come down because the area under this curve has to be 100 watts. 
This is why we do equalization before we transmit, because it determines where in the spectrum from low, which is around, say, 250 hertz, to medium, which is, say, uh, 1,200 or so, and the high, which is about 2,600 hertz. Okay, if you drop one of these down, it puts more power into the other frequencies. And again, remember, no one knows what your real voice sounds like. So if you keep it low and put it up here, this right here is the part where the speech is most uh, intelligible. Able, 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 intelligible, uh, right here. This right here gives the voice character. Now, what do you want the DX station to detect? You want to be intelligible to the DX station and put as much power into the intelligibility part of the spectrum and reduce the power in uh, this. I mean, this is not going to sound like some old time AM radio. It's going to sound like single sideband. And if you've got a little bit more, power, you need something here because this is, I'm going to say the basis. I was going to say base, but basis. This is what your speech is built on is the low part. Now women, have got a lower cutoff, but it works the same way. I'm seeing the women have a higher cutoff, but it works the same way. The intelligibility is in the high frequencies. Now, <clears throat> my voice, um, of course, I'm male. I'm, I sing bass, um, and my voice is a little bit deeper. It's not a tenor voice. Uh, it's funny to hear people who speak in a tenor voice sing bass. It's just quite interesting to find out what's going on there. Now, remember that middle C, 256 hertz approximately, um, is um, actually below the cutoff for speech uh, on a single sideband radio. It is part of the uh, passband for AM radio. So if you are using AM, you can get that nice boomy uh, voice, but if you're wasting power on it, it means there's less power on the parts of the speech that are more intelligible. So my ears, after 71 years of use and misuse, um, tend to be um, cut off about eight kilohertz, anything above eight kilohertz, I don't speak. And I have run into some uh, females whose voices I can barely understand because they have a high-pitched voice. And there's a lot of intelligibility components above eight kilohertz. And I don't get them. I can't get them. So, Oh, well, one of those things, I mean, I have a fairly hard cutoff there. Amplification is not going to help much. Uh, frequency conversion might, but amplification does not. So the human voice, the study of the human voice, the frequency component distribution, what parts of the speech are, uh, convey the intelligibility, what parts convey other emotions, and so on, has been the subject of research since the early days of Bell Labs when they had to really understand human speech in order to build long distance uh, communications across the country. It's actually quite a fascinating subject. Now let's go back to one more thing and that is compression. Here's what compression does. If you've got a speech waveform that does this, what compression does is it raises the lower parts. It'll kind of lower the higher parts. In other words, it takes wide uh, range of levels and converts this 
to a lower range of levels. And this is independent. If you've got your audio set up correctly, then go into the instruction book on your radio. Okay, what you're going to look for here is setting the speech compressor, and it works in single sideband mode, okay? And this will tell you exactly how to do it. And it will tell you where to put the mic gain and what meter to use. There's a meter that you can use that tells you compression. If we look at the radio here, okay, um, let's see, audio, well, function, compression. Oh, I'm not in, I got to get into a different mode. Let's go ahead and pull this up. And we're going to go 14 USB-D, you know, 14. Again, it's just USB, okay. And we're going to look at the functions and we go into compression. Compression on, and then we use the, oops, the knob over here to set the amount of compression. Okay, this takes a signal that varies from uh, quiet to loud and just kind of puts it in the middle. Okay, and uh, this, for example, mic gain I have set here about 50% compressor up there and it seems to work and you follow the instructions for uh, checking that out okay follow the instructions in your manual carefully okay here's a great secret here's a great secret the uh, if the speech compression is set properly no one will know that you're using speech compression but you will note that you get almost a 3db improvement in uh, the power out. <clears throat> so the duty cycle of a single sideband radio with normal speech is about 20%. But if you throw the compressor in and adjust it correctly, it's about 40%. That's the same as doubling your output power. Okay, I actually always use speech compression because I have it set up right so it's not obvious that it's compressed and I get a lot of people coming back to my CQs because I use the speech compression. So uh, I do recommend using it. Again, anybody I'm talking to, nobody, unless they're a viewer of this channel, knows what my natural voice is like. Uh, actually, the voice that I record here, I compress before I put it on the air because I tend to speak loudly and then sort of taper off toward the end of sentences and then speak loudly again. So the compression helps uh, put that in uh, proper shape. So we're dealing with three things here, mic gain. And again, there's two possibilities because I am not familiar with the ASU radio. It may be that when you move the mic gain knob on the microphone, it also moves the one inside the radio. That would be ideal, but I do not think that is what's happening. You've got two amplifiers end to end. So set one in the middle and then use the one in the radio where you need it. <clears throat> also, you have a speech equalization, which equalizes across the spectrum of speech. Now, if you use a standard audio mixer uh, equalization settings, you're running into the problem here that it's calling audio anything from 30 hertz up to about 15,000 hertz, whereas our radio is transmitting from 300 hertz to 3,000 kilohertz, or maybe a little less. Some of the newer radios, it's only about 2,650. So what that means is low, medium, and high is in reference to that radio band. So compression. Uh, have you ever wondered why you're listening to television and the commercials sound louder? They're not actually louder, but they're compressed more. 
So what they do is they equalize the levels of the various sounds and then bring them back up so they're up at, at zero dB so that they can uh, broadcast them. So something to look for. Anyway, I hope I've answered your question there, Brian, um, and that you have a lot of good, lucks with, uh, good luck with your 99, 991A, which is a great radio. If you've watched this far, please subscribe, please click like, uh, please go to decastler.com slash support and look for the Patreon way in there, or you can go to Patreon directly, patreon.com slash ke0og. We'll take you right to my Patreon, and that helps support this channel financially so I can keep bringing you these videos. And uh, I would also uh, like to suggest that you take a look at the giveaway. We give away something of value every month for free. And this is this month's giveaway is the SDR Play Radio uh, RSPDX. It's for August of 2022. If you're watching this in September, it'll be something different. But you can go to decastlercom slash giveaway for more information. Send a postcard to me with your name, call sign, address, and phone number. And um, I'll throw it into the pile for the drawing. And uh, you send it to Dave Kassler, K-E-0-O-G, at P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Until we next meet, 73.